What's going on guys? In this video I'm going to be sharing with you an old school setup that has been good for years and we didn't see it a lot this year. Um, but it's really really good and I think it's going to be really good in Madden 22. It is really good in this year's game. It's just not a lot of people have been running it. And so this comes to us out of the Pat Sale in the New England Patriots playbook. Now if you're new to the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button. I do videos every day that can help you become uh, just a better Madden player, and so if you want to get better on both sides of the ball, I post videos every day that can help you. Um, we give away free schemes every week in our text membership. We have ebooks and coaching sessions and all that stuff. So if you want to get plugged into the channel, first step is to subscribe. Now um, we're going to be talking about Pat Sale in this video, and uh, this is quickly becoming my favorite play in the game, uh, just because of where everything's at right now. Um, but I want to share with you this uh, setup. I really like this setup. Now, honestly, I actually, I actually did this wrong. Um, I really like this to the short side of the field. This is a short side bunch setup. It's actually really, really, really good because you're going to see what we're going to do with this is going to make this short side bunch because we want to actually have a lot of field for our routes to be able to move to the left side of the field. So it's basically a flood concept. It's not really, I don't even know if it would be a flood concept. It's like, um, I would say it's more of a levels concept. But it's really, really good. So um, most people are going to set their defense up essentially like this, and then they're going to use or kind of right in here uh, out of this out of this gun bunch. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to put the tight end or the X receiver here on a drag route. We're going to put the circle receiver on a um, basically like a little five yard in route. Uh, I really like the five yard in route. If you want, you can put him on a drag. You can also put him on a slant. Okay, but I personally really like the five yard dig route, and that's pretty much all we're going to do. Now, with our running back on this outside, we have a decision we can put him on a route or we can block him. I normally will block him out of this, it's a uh, six man protection. Um, if you want to, you could put him on, um, you could basically ID this guy and then let him release if the linebacker doesn't blitz. That's an option. The reason I like to do this though is I actually think the routes work better this way. The one other route I would put him on if I was running this and I wanted to put the running back on something, I would put him on um, a swing route to the right side. And the reason why I would do that is because it would just help with the spacing when that circle receiver comes across. You don't have to do that. I would recommend just blocking him, but that is something you can do. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna motion out the circle receiver and we're gonna snap him just before he sets. So when, as wide as possible, just like that get him way out there and what you're gonna see is we're gonna clear out a lot of space over the middle of the field to be able to attack with that or with that um, that motioned out uh, in route the cool part about this in my opinion is it gets really good spacing and they have a zone here um, they have their user here right but what you're gonna notice is because of this tight end drag route um, it's going to create really really good spacing uh, for this so you're gonna see this tight end drag route is really gonna do a good job of pulling the zones because that in route is so delayed there's just no one over there and you're gonna be able to take five yards here five yards there pretty much every play and I love this play I honestly when I run this play um, I don't normally I don't know if my in routes ever been guarded um, uh, by a zone it's always had to be guarded by a user which is why this is really important so if they are what they will probably do, uh, just knowing the way the game plays, is they're probably going to basically kind of sit on the drag for just a minute, and then they're going to, um, you know, and then they're going to move to the next guy. So if they do something like that, another little setup you can do is a wheel route and then two in routes. This is going to help with the spacing a ton. And what you're going to see is this running back is going to pull all these zones out of the way. And now you see here, look at all that room I've got to be able to throw my tight end route, uh, my tight end little uh, in route against you know pretty much anything the defense is going to do. So let me show you that one more time here. Um, and the cool part about this is they can't, like this is why it's so important to really get this in route out there. Um, you don't want the, you know, I kind of, you can drag the tight end. I just think it's better spacing if you don't. Um, and you really want to get this guy out here. You want to like he. You want him to really almost be like that right there. That's about perfect. And as you see here, look how much more spacing you have um, because that running back route really pulls these zones outside. 
So in the event that they're going to try to just sit on the dig, um, they're going to have a really frustrating day because what you're going to see happen is, you know, they've got to have a yellow route or a yellow zone over there on that little five yard dig route. And so you're going to see this right here and just opens up a lot of space now for this tight end route right there. Okay, just like that. Now, um, the one other thing I will sh say about this is I want to show you with the running back wheel and the drag. So, um, for example, if we were to do this where we put the running back on a wheel route, and I just want to give you some really advanced coverage um, from your opponent. So if they do something like that, if we use a drag, I just want to show you what it looks like. Um, you'll see this tight end does get over, and honestly, the spacing is not terrible, but you see how that, see how the, I mean, pretty much every zone can take that away. Now, and, and the other thing that's bad about that is the timing of the routes. Um, it's easy for the user to be able to play both the in route and the drag. We don't want them to be able to play both. Uh, we want them to have to have to pick one. The other thing that I like about this uh, is this dig route is good against the yellow zone on the right side. So because of this streak, um, and we, you know, I would honestly re-streak him just so he really threatens the yellow zones um because of that because of that streak what you'll see is the yellow zone will back up and when it backs up i now got this window right there every single time okay now the reason i spent so much time on this is because what this is going to do is it's going to make their user have to sit down here and i promise you their user does not want to sit back there why because they can't now that they literally cannot cover the whole field. And so now what you're going to be in a situation of is if they sit on these underneath routes, okay, because we have two really nice underneath routes, now look at all this grass that is wide open for Mike Evans over on that line, off, over on that right side. Now, I did not um, – let me, let me jump back out of here for just a minute and let me set these zone drops. Um, it's actually better against zone drops. Because zone drops are going to just do what they're going to do. Um, that was just basically default coverages. And I think default coverage is honestly harder on that specific play. Um, the, because the zones uh, will react to the fact that you've got two in-breaking patterns. When they're in zone drops like this, this yellow zone should back up a lot more. So um, let me just show you this just like so. And you should get a lot more space to be able to throw your in route. But look at all the space that I can throw this ball. That's an easy read. That's an easy read um, for your for your offense. Very simple. Um, this is not um, the most complicated thing in the world, but it is really, honestly, truly, might just be the most effective thing. Uh, and the reason why is because the yellow zone has to respect the streak. If the yellow zone doesn't, you throw the streak right now inside pass them. If they do, which most of the time they will then you have this delayed dig that is so good at getting under. Look at this. It's just completely underneath everything. Um, it's completely underneath everything for an easy five to seven yards. And if they sit on that, which they have to, they have to come down and sit on that, um, because we've made it so um, where I would, you know, we've made it really delayed in terms of how the route is going to go about getting open, then what you're going to notice is when they try to go get this, because this in route is so long developing, now that route's open over the middle. And, and obviously we could throw that a little bit earlier, but there's just no way for them to cover both. Um, especially when you motion him out, uh, you find that this thing is really, really hard. So let me show you something else real quick. Because of the zone, when, the, when they're using zone drops, um, you're gonna have a little bit better of an opportunity to hit this tight end drag. So you see here, right, just like that. The reason why is because when you combine that with a wheel route, the uh, seam flat zone, which is the most popular zone people have been using in their underneath zone, it sucks into the wheel, uh, which is really, really good. And, and if they use a, a curl flat, I uh, just want to show this for an example. So if they use a curl flat zone over there on that side, then you're still going to have the same situation. The curl flat's going to go up. And then you see that's what we were trying to show you with the drag. And that's that that makes more sense as to why the drag makes more sense. The other reason why I really like this concept of short side, and we've been over this before, is if the defense is um, if if you're running this to the short side and their user has to come underneath, um, I mean it's basically GG's. If you can force their user to have to come down, 
Um, this route to the square receiver when ran to the short side of the field is absolutely insane. Just pass lead it right there once that cloud sucks in. And as you can see, it's an easy, easy read uh, for you. They have to go with that route. And they, they don't only just have to go with the route there. But let me show you one other thing that you can do. So let's say, for example, that they are... Um, that they're doing this where they put the curl flat out there so that curl flat will kind of shift to the outside a little bit more this is why i love the running back wheel um, because it opens up a snap throw basically so what you'll see is that right there becomes wide open so if they come down on the tight end drag or the in route there's a big pocket on that left side so the, the easiest way to show you this and i know it's not sound defense but it, it does get at the point of what i'm trying to show uh, which is when their user is kind of come down on the drag is I'm just going to spy him and what you're going to see Is you got that motion Remember, just get him all the way out But look at this pocket right here that I can throw that every single time that is a laser And so they have to it, it, you really put them in a lot of stress because their user can't cover everything and their user You're asking their user. This is the this is literally what your their user is going to have to do to stop this um, he's going to have to sit here. He's going to have to jab here, then come back here, then go here, then go all the way back over here. He can't defend all that grass. Somebody's going to be open in all of this. The other thing I like is, let's say, for example, and to show this, I'm going to try to... I, I don't have a great way to be able to show this. Um, I'm going to put a, another yellow out there, okay? Okay. Um, so let's say they go with the post and they have for whatever reason an additional yellow zone I want you to watch this dig route we haven't talked about this a lot but look at how look at this right here just simply playmaker it straight up and it gets into the soft spot in the zone just like that okay very smooth the other thing I like about this is and this is the last thing I want to talk about just for today is if they let's say that they really go heavy underneath coverage they put in routes and and, and, and spies and and everything they can do to try to stop this underneath you're still going to be able to complete it because of where you snap it okay get it all the way out here watch watch that vertical hook get pulled and then i can just get right in that pocket okay so i love this play this is my base play this has been what i've been running for the last week um that's really good it's a lot of fun to run uh, it's really simple reads too. You're just simply moving across the play. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions, feel free to text me. If you want to get my full New England scheme, it's not just the gun bunch that I break down. I break down the whole playbook. Every single formation in New England is completely broken down, including trips tied in, ace side offset, split close, bunch, uh, all of that stuff. So if you want to get that full playbook, you can get that down in the description. It's pretty cheap right now. And this is going to be the way that I'm going to be uh, running offense at least to start the season in Madden 22. So thanks for your time. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you want to get the guide, it's available down in the description.